Is, yeah. Uh, er, it happened so suddenly that I just... I apologize to Natsume-san. You really know how to hurt a woman's feelings, you know? I tried my best. Aw, she looks so sad. At what? You said you were coming over, so I went and got dressed up. I only came here to ask the results of the investigation. Oh, is that how it is? I suppose I should have known better. All right, gentlemen, come on in. Not to be winks at us before leading the way to the hospital. I knew I could count on you to deal with her, Reiji. Oh, give it a rest. Instead of the waiting room, or a sick room, we're immediately brought here. The autopsy room. Or, rather, the operating room. I've never heard of any operations actually being carried out here, so I guess calling it an autopsy room is fine. Well then, what did you want to hear about? Tell us about the corpse from Inokashira Park and Tama Cemetery. Reiji doesn't know the finer details, so go through them one by one. Alright, let's start with the dismemberment. Natsume picks a shelf of papers up off her desk. I pull out my notebook. <clears throat> On the dawn of February 29th, the corpse of what appeared to be a young female was discovered in Inokashira Park in Kichinojoki, located near Masumoshino City. To be more accurate, it was discovered where four limbs and the head. What was discovered was four limbs and head. Okay. The torso has yet to be found, and the pond was also dredged, but nothing found of relevance. Was relevant. Do we know her identity? That we don't know. Even though her head remains, it's in a state of severe decomposition. It was full of maggots, and there was something strange about it. Strange? It's still a pretty cold time of year, right? Nevertheless, the growth of maggots was far too rapid. It doesn't match up with the corpse state of decay. Matsume flips through her notebook. Or documents. Whichever. With this degree of decomposition, we can surmise that it was left out there around the end of February, and within one week after death, and within one week of death. However, the size of the maggot is around one centimeter, which means that around 12 days ago had passed. That around 12 days had passed. Could it be a measurement error? When they're twice the expected size, you can't call that a mere error. When it's possible, while it's possible the body was refrigerated, both the decomposition and the growth of the maggots would have been halted. Interesting. Also, I took some fingerprints, but they didn't match anyone on the list down at the MDP. Even if a search request has been submitted, it's not like the victim's prints will be in our files. Well, I've got other methods at my disposal, so that's fine. Dental records, for instance. What's her blood type? There wasn't really any blood left, but tentatively speaking, I can say she's an A. Hmm. I nod while scribbling my notebook with a pen. Are there any other points worth mentioning? There are indeed. This will probably interest you the most. There were traces of a vital reaction at the point of where her legs were amputated. A vital reaction at the point where her legs were amputated. You're saying the legs were cut off while she was still alive? That's right. However, there were no vital reactions from the arms. So, the legs were amputated, and then she died of massive hemorrhaging. Afterwards, her arms and head were chopped off. Is that how it happened? That seems likely. Yes. Damn. 
that's fucked up. Chopping off someone's legs, letting them die, and then dismembering their arms and fucking head. That's that's real fucked, man. That is real fucked. If I'm gonna be alive, though, goddamn. Alright. Next up is the corpse discovered at Tama Cemetery in Fuchu City on March 2nd. The victim in this case was also a young female. Her left arm was amputated. She was buried, and her foot was covered in kerosene instead of blaze. This is the case I am investigating. This one's relatively simple. In this case, the corpse was pretty much whole, so there aren't many things to know for certain. So there are many things we know for certain. How certain? Well, let's go through them in order. First is the estimated time of death. We know for a fact this one died March 1st, sometime, sometime between the hours of 7 p.m. and midnight. Natsumi-san's tone leaves no room for doubt. Look, the foot was set on fire, right? There's signs in the muscle indicating the leg was re-stiffened. That clearly means that the leg was artificially stiffened within five hours of death. You're telling us the leg was moved at the time the fire was set? That's likely. I can say with certainty that she was killed within five hours of her discovery. Really? Hmm. Interesting. What's the cause of death? Trauma from losing the left arm? There was a vital reaction where the left arm was amputated. But there's something else as well. Ooh. Her abdomen was sliced open, and an organ, her uterus, was cut out. What the hell? I had a feeling this was a bizarre case, but I hadn't expected something like this. That's not all. An eggshell was inserted into the abdomen cavity. It's painted black, but it's been cracked. The girl in the black egg, huh? A black eggshell. What on earth? Why did they do such a thing? You're the detective? You tell me. My job is just to learn what I can from the dead bodies. <laughs> That's right. This just might be the clue I need to the culprit's identity. It appears that the carving knife was used. They went out of their way to stitch the wound closed, but they used regular sewing thread, not specialized tools at all. Hmm. What about the left arm? From the way the bone's been crushed at the cross section, I'd say they used a small hatchet, or similarly, similarly heavy instrument. Oh, and you remember how I said her uterus had been cut away? Well, her vagina was left intact. And what does that tell us? After some investigation, I found traces that sexual intercourse had taken place. However, I couldn't confirm the presence of any semen. So you can probably rule out rape homicide. However, even though the body was wrapped in a black cloth, it was completely nude. Therefore, we can't rule out the possibility of less than pure intentions. I see. Are there any clues that might help us zero in on the killer? Let's see. Ah, I forgot something important. The corpse belongs to a girl who went missing on the evening of the first. A student named Koizumi K. So, We've confirmed her identity. There was no decomposition, no determining. So determining that was easy. She tosses the documents to her desk. Well, that's all we got for now. By the way, Tokisaka-san, have you met with that guy recently? Natsumi-san suddenly changes the subject. By that guy, I'd assume you mean him. Well, gee, that's just a fucking easy way to explain things. Yeah, that guy, yeah, okay, that guy, yeah, that guy, I know him, yeah, that guy. No. 
There's only one person in my circle of acquaintances, but Natsumi-san would address in that manner. Of course, of course. I've got a present for him. So, could you take it over to him for me, please? Why do I have to do it? Wouldn't it be better if you just went to him and did it yourself? It's not like he lives really far away or anything. But he's such a shy boy, and he's always trying to avoid me. Not my problem. Why don't you ask Uzumi or something? Uzumi sounds a police officer. I couldn't ask that of him. I don't like where this is going. Well, I don't have anyone else to ask but you, Tokisaka-san. That bastard Uzumi left the autopsy room without me noticing. Son of a bitch. Ah, fine, fine. All I have to do is drop it off, right? Thank you, Tokisaka-san. In exchange, I'll return the favor next time we meet. Shit. That's why I hate being dependent on her. Motherfuckers. It's already evening by the time I get outside. I'm starving. I haven't eaten anything since this morning. Tokisaka-san. No eating what's inside the present. Okay. I wouldn't dream of it. I'm about to leave, swinging the package she's entrusted me, when I notice something. Natsumi-san, I can't help but think there's something off about your sign. The sign on the wall of the hospital reads, Takanari Hospital. Well, that's annoying. I thought I had it done up correctly, but it looks like they made a mistake. Natsumi-san looks up at it and sighs heavily. Well, I suppose if it's corrected before I open for business, there's no problem. She's not open for business yet, and she just did a fucking autopsy on two bodies? What the fuck? Damn. She must be really fucking good. Even if you got it fixed, wouldn't it just get washed away by the rain? Since you're so concerned, why don't you go get a permanent marker and have you write it, Tokisaka-san? Why do I have to do it? Oh, just because. Give me a minute. Natsumi-san disappears into the hospital. Oh man, I could leave right now. But if I do that, there will be hell to pay afterwards. Guess I've got no choice. I go and bring out a stepladder from behind the building. Thanks for waiting. Well then. I'm counting on you. Uh, yeah, yeah. I lean the stepladder against the wall, climb up, and fix the character. Oh, right. Could you do that sign over there too, please? Natsumi-san spouts out instruction from the ground while I fiddle with the sign. Is this good enough? Yep, it certainly boosts the spirits to see your own name on there, doesn't it, Mr. Detective from the Tokisaka Detective Agency? If that's what you wanted, you should have just put Natsumi Hospital, Toshika Takishiro-san. Hold up, since I have so many siblings, things get confusing if you call us all by our last name, so make sure you call me Natsumi-chan, okay? Since when have I ever called you that? After making Uzumi treat me to dinner, I head back to my office. Slightly tipsy. From all that alcohol. Yeah. Well then, let's piece together everything that's happened today. I don't think you should be doing that while you're drunk. You might make a mistake or, like, think you saw something you didn't see. Just throwing it out there. But I digress. Let's go. I settle into a chair and open my notebook. And we'll end things here.